Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tanushri and I welcome you all to the question paper discussion session of CSI net exam held this year on 17 September. Today in this session, I will discuss questions of unit 9. That is diversity of life forms. In this exam, not only two or three, but eight questions were asked. Yes, you heard me right. In this exam, which was held on 17 September, eight questions from Unit 9 were asked, which were based on topics from plant kingdom, animal kingdom, food crops, domestication, food crops and their domestication, as well as endangered species. So let's have a look at the questions which were asked in this exam. Starting with the first question, the following are selected plant epimorphies. A, development of xylem, development of cuticle, development of independent sporophyte, development of eustilic. So which option represents the correct evolutionary sequence of the above? And these are the options which were given. Now to answer this question, you must be familiar with the term epimorphy as well as you must be thorough with the plant classification. So what are epimorphies or what is epimorphy? Epimorphy is referred to as derived trait from ancestral trait. So it is like an innovation from the ancestral form. So basically, if you are thorough with the classification of the plants, if you are thorough with the characteristics of thelophyta, pteridophyta, bryophyta, gymnosperms and angiosperms, you can easily answer this question. So here we have to find out that which of the following xylem, cuticle, independent, sporophyte or eustile, we have to arrange them in the evolutionary sequence, right? According to the evolutionary sequence. So when we talk about xylem, so evolutionarily, pteridophytes are the first terrestrial plants to possess vascular tissues like xylem and chloe. When we talk about cuticle, cuticle occur in all land plants, including mosses. So we can say that cuticle must be first in the evolutionary, like first to be placed in the evolutionary sequence. But it's better to confirm, it's better to look at the other questions or other options also. So if we say cuticle, then accordingly like A is xylem, B is cuticle, C is independent sporophyte and D we use to lay. So according to the options given, answer must be three because B is given first, that is cuticle. But as I mentioned, we, it's better to confirm the answer by looking at other options as well, looking at other uh, terms which are given in the question. So independent sporophyte. Independent sporophyte, they are the dominant forms in uh, all club mosses, horsetails, ferns, gymnosperms and angiosperms. And when we talk about eustile, so eustile, they are mostly found in seed plants such as gymnosperms and angiosperms. So that means this must be last in the evolutionary sequence to be placed this must be the last to be placed in the evolutionary sequence so that means the order should be b c a d and therefore this confirms our answer the answer should be option three moving on to next question the biological species concept defines species as a group of populations that are reproductively isolated from others However, this definition is not applicable to groups where sexual reproduction has not been observed or is extremely rare. Choose the correct options of organisms where biological species concept may therefore not apply. So if you go through this question, like when you see this term biological species concept, the very first that comes, very first thing that comes to your mind is that uh, this particular concept we study in unit 10. So maybe this question is related to unit 10. But the catch here is that you have to simply answer this question based on this particular term that sexual reproduction has not been observed or is rare. So that means here you have to recall the concept, the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So we very well know that sexual reproduction is the most common uh, life cycle in multicellular eukaryotes, uh, such as in animals, fungi and plants. And also it occurs in some uh, unicellular eukaryotes. 
but sexual reproduction is not present in prokaryotes. So if you look at the options, right? If you look at the options, cyanobacteria, cyanophyta or uh, blue-green algae, right? They are prokaryotic organisms. So sexual reproduction does not occur in cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria, it uh, reproduce asexually either by binary fission or multiple fission uh, in unicellular colonial form or by fragmentation or spore formation in filamentous species. However, when we talk about euglenophyta, so euglenophyta, like according to old system of classification, that is five uh, kingdom scheme, euglenophyta, it belongs to kingdom protista. And uh, we can say that sexual reproduction is not found in euglenophyta. Asexual, like asexual reproduction is there. So euglenophyta, basically the asexual reproduction, uh, it occurs by longitudinal binary vision. So that means the answer here is option four. And here I have some more uh, explanation for you all that if we accept the definition of the species, then definitely sexual reproduction is not observed in cyanobacterium euglenophyta. Because biological species, they are defined as reproductive community of populations that occupy a specific niche in nature. Moving on to another question. There is a species that is critically endangered found in Russian Far East. So this question is about critically endangered species, but the CSR net exam has not asked the critically endangered species from India. They have asked from Russia. So that means you should have this much knowledge, like you should be aware of not only endangered species in India, but also in the world, right? In other countries also. Then only you can answer this question. So let's complete the question. They have given the characteristics of the species as well, that it is solitary. But it has been reported that some males stay with females after mating and may even help with rearing the young. So you have to identify the species. So basically here the answer is Amur leopard. So this is also known as Far East leopard or Manchurian leopard or Korean leopard. And uh, basically it is found in Russian Far East and it is solitary. Basically, this particular uh, leopard is adapted to life in temperate forest that makes up the northernmost part of the species range. And uh, it has been reported that some males stay with females after mating and may even help with rearing the young. And they have uh, they have a huge like they usually live for 10 to 15 years and in captivity for up to 20 years. So these are the characteristics uh, of the Amur leopard. Now, moving on to question number 45, which is based on like, uh, which is from unit nine only. So question is, which one of the following traits would hypothetically not be considered for preferential selection during domestication of the corresponding crops listed below? Now, you might be wondering from unit nine, from which subunit? So basically, this particular question is framed from unit nine, subunit E, that is organisms of health and agriculture important importance and uh, the topic uh, which is given in this particular subunit is domestic animals and crops so from there this question has been framed so here in this question we have to uh, find out that uh, which of the trait is not considered for selection during domestication of the crops increased fruit size of tomato reduced spinniness in okra shattering seeds of corn and increased oil content of mustard so again, if you have studied about fruit crops, their domestication, you can answer this question. So here the answer is option three. So basically, uh, all these three, uh, when you talk about increased food size of tomato, reduced spinniness in okra, and increased oil content in uh, mustard. So these are the preferential selection of the crops during uh, domestication. The one which is not considered is the shattering seeds of corn. Shattering seeds of corn means the shedding of seeds uh, when they are right. So basically, let's know some more information about seed shattering. So it's primarily a genetically controlled trait 
However, it is significantly influenced by environmental condition, management practices, and their interactions, especially in agro ecosystems. And this trait is completely undesirable in domesticated crop. So, therefore, there are consistent efforts to minimize it through conventional and molecular breeding approaches. And therefore, as in the question, it is asked that which is which trait is uh, not which is not considered for preferential selection during domestication, this is the answer. So here answer is option three. Now moving on to another question. So again, here this question is based on food crops and it's a match the following type question where you can see that uh, on uh, like the, a table is given and the food crops as well as the region of domestication is given. And you have to find out the correct match between the food crops and its region of domestication. So again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have studied about the food crops and the domestication, you can easily answer this question. So when we talk about, like, to answer this question, like usually in Biotechnica, we say that you should always go for match the following type questions because even if you know the answer of at least, if, you're, if you are um, confident about any one of the uh, food crop as given in this particular question, you can easily answer this question. So let's say you are confident about the moon bean, right? Let's say you have studied about moon bean or let's say you have studied about banana. So accordingly, you can answer this question. So basically, when we talk about banana, so they are thought to be grown in region in, Mal in uh, peninsula, Malaya Peninsula, Indonesia, Philippines, right? So as Indonesia was given in the table, so yes, we can match banana with Indonesia. Then moon bean, it was domesticated in India. When we talk about sorghum, it was first domesticated in Northeast Central Africa around 5,000, 6,000 years ago. In wheat, it is one of the first crops to be domesticated more than 10,000 years ago in the Middle East. So I know most of you have uh, thought that wheat might be domesticated in India, but that is not the correct answer. So if we just uh, match the correct uh, combinations, so basically the correct combination is A3, that is uh, banana and Indonesia, moon bean and uh, India, then sorghum, Africa and wheat, that is in Middle East. So when we look at the options, uh, as soon as I say A3, so A3 is given in option two. So this must, this should be the answer. But here B is given one and C is given two, which is not what we have observe what we have uh, information that we have uh, uh, gone through the standard reference material. So basically we can say that this question can be challenged because the answer which is given in the key answer key is not correct. So you can challenge it right. So in the answer key the answer is option two but because B1 and C2 they are not correct so you can challenge this question. Moving on to question number 100, which is again from unit 9. And this question is based on animal kingdom. Now, I will say that even if you have not prepared unit 9 for CSN at exam, but you are from zoology background, you could have easily answered this question. If you're thorough with the concepts that you study in graduation or post-graduation regarding the animal kingdom, if you remember that, you can easily, you would have easily answered this question, right? So basically, just have a look at the question. Following, us are, following are a set of characteristics found in the animal kingdom. Body is streamlined, thick seated scales, they may be herbivorous, carnivorous, oviparous, right? Or uh, nervous system comprised of brain, 10 pairs of cranial nerves. All of them are oviparous, exhibit sexual dimorphism. So basically, the characteristics are given and you have, to you have to select the correct set of characterizing features for the class Pisces. So if you remember about Pisces, you can easily answer these questions. And here are the options. So just recall about, like if you remember some diagrams, right? If you remember some examples uh, in this class Pisces, you can easily answer this question. So here you can see on your screen some, some uh, images I have placed, right? So how it looks like, what is the body shape, right? So it is body streamlined, you can see here, right? It is tapering from here as well as from here, right? Then uh, basically 
when we talk about uh, Pisces, the characteristics are that the body is streamlined, they have spindle shaped or elongated body as well. And yes, skin is covered with scales. Definitely they are covered uh, with the scales and the role of the scale is to provide protection to the internal organelles. Then yes, they may be herbivorous, carnivorous, oviparous or ovoviparous. And yes, nervous system comprises brain and 10 pairs of cranial nerves. The sexes are separate. And based on the characteristics which are given in the question and by matching them, like by recalling the characteristics of the Pisces, we can say that yes, the statements A, B, C and D which are given in the question are correct. So that is A, B, C and D are correct. And therefore... The answer is option four here. So I have highlighted the text in red, which is the characteristics which are given in the question as well. So it's easy for you to look at it. Now moving on to another question. So again, this question is from Animal Kingdom. Which one of the options correctly represents organism from the subphyla, and they have given the Chelicerata, Myriapoda, Hexapoda in this specific sequence. So options are here on your screen. So basically, this question you can easily answer if you know, if you remember the examples of the organisms from these subphyla. So here I have uh, added a table for you all. So here you can clearly see that when we talk about myriapoda, the example is centipedes. When we talk about hexapoda, the example is springtail, which is given in the question options. And then when we call, when we call, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, chelicerata, then here horseshoe crabs is the one of the example. And uh, so therefore, we have to look at the options where all these uh, three examples are given. But yes, you have to keep in mind the sequence because in the question it is asked in this specific sequence. You have to first answer the example of uh, Chelicerata, then Miriapoda, and then Hexapoda, right? So that means if you look at the table, then it should be horseshoe crabs, right? Then centipedes, and then centipedes, which is given in option two. And therefore, answer here is option two. So they are not very difficult, right? If, again, I'm saying that if you are not, if you have not prepared unit nine for CSN exam, but based on your uh, background, educational background, like if you have zoology, if you have studied about animal kingdom in your graduation, post-graduation, and your concepts are thorough, you remember the characteristics, the examples, you can easily answer these questions. Now, moving on to the last question, which was being asked from unit nine, that is question number 114. Individuals belonging to the fossil genera calamites are considered to be upright arborescent plants. Arborescent means that uh, they resemble a tree in properties or growth or structural appearance. So they, are, they were characterized by stems that mostly arose from subterranean rhizomes. The cross sections of young stems showed the presence of central pith canal and collateral vascular bundles with carinal canals. To which of the following extent genera is this plant most similar? And in the options, they have given Silotum, Selaginella, Acusitum, and Rhinia. So basically, again, this question you can only answer if you have studied about the genera calamites. So basically, here the answer is option three, uh, that is Acusitum. So calamites is a genus of extinct uh, arbos, arborescent tree-like horse tails to which the modern horse tails are closely related. So the explanation of the answer is given here on your screen. You can go through it. So Acusitum, it is a family of ferns. It's a living fossil. And basically calamites when we talk about. So it's a genus of extinct tree-like. Like arborescent horse tails to which the modern horse tails, that is genus Acusitum, are closely related. So this particular statement from standard reference material confirms our answer. So this is all about the questions from Unit Nine. Do tell us in the comment box that uh, how was how uh, was how you like the questions of uh, Unit Nine? Were you able to solve them? And you are always free. 
always uh, feel free to discuss your uh, problems with us any doubts if you have regarding unit 9 so we are always there to help you so with this i end my session thank you and take care